Here's our overview of the 10 restaurants at Sandals Grenada. Hey everyone, it's Andy and Jenna here from A Couple Travelers. Welcome back to another video. Today we're giving you everything you need to know about all of the restaurants at Sandals Grenada. And stay tuned to the end of the video where we're gonna share one negative about our experience making dining reservations at this resort. So let's get into it. At Sandals Grenada, there are 10 restaurants at the resort. We're gonna go through each one, tell you which ones you need dining reservations for, which one have a dress code, when they're open, etc. So you have everything you need to know before you head there. So first up, we have Butch's Chop House. This restaurant is open for dinner only. Reservations are required. It is one of two places requiring reservations and it is resort casual attire. Meaning you can pretty much wear anything you want as long as you have footwear on and your swimsuit is covered. Butch's is named after the founder of Sandals, Gordon Butch Stewart. We've always thoroughly enjoyed this restaurant. It always has great steaks, really good sides, good quality desserts. Yeah, I guess it's like a, a marquee meal of your vacation. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody kind of usually centers that around a steakhouse and for Sandals, Butch's, Butch's is that venue. Yeah, we will say of all the Butch's we've been to, this was our least favorite due to quality of service, mm -hmm. which was unfortunate and we ate at Butch's in Grenada twice on our trip. Mm -hmm. Just didn't have great service while we were there, which was a little disappointing. In the same area of as Butch's at Sandals Grenada, you have Cucina Romana, which is the Italian restaurant. It is open for breakfast and dinner. Reservations are not required and it is resort casual attire. So for breakfast, this location is a breakfast buffet. So they have an omelet station where you could also get some uh, waffles and some pancakes. And then your sandals breakfast buffets are all pretty similar. This one had a fresh orange juice uh, squeezing machine, which was pretty cool. Yeah, it was good. Um, an assortment of pastries. Um, and one thing we noticed at Sandals Grenada too, um, that we I think we noticed at Curacao, there are a lot of British visitors uh, they come to the resort. So they always had the British breakfast foods there as well. So the grilled tomatoes, yeah. the beans. Um, so if you are coming uh, from England, uh, you will feel hopefully right at home with those sorts of mm -hmm. food, uh, those sorts of types of food on the menu. Good assortment. And like okay. we said, Cucina Romana is an Italian restaurant. So dinner, you have chicken parm, you have arancini, you have Caesar salad, you have antipasto. So a great Italian selection. We ate there our first uh, the, the day we actually flew into Grenada, uh, and it was a great meal to start off the trip mm -hmm. by. And this was our second Cucina Romana because there was one in Barbados. This one took the cake for sure. Yeah. The, the quality of food was much better here than the one in Barbados in our opinion. Next up, we have Kimono's, which is a hibachi restaurant at Sandals Grenada. And this restaurant is actually right between Cucina Romana and Butch's. So yes. this is all in one area of the, <laughs> of the resort. resort. Yes, very true. So this is open for dinner only and reservations are required. So Butch's and Kimono's are the two restaurants where you need to make reservations and it is resort casual. So how this restaurant works is that since it is hibachi, everybody eats the same thing. It's called the Emperor's Feast, and it's not like you pick if you want chicken or if you want steak. You get it all. You get chicken, you get steak, you get shrimp, and you get mahi-mahi with uh, the fried rice and all the veggies and then you just pick what you want for appetizers and for dessert. So for appetizers, we had the gyoza, we had the uh, ginger sesame salad. And then there was three desserts to choose from. So um, you could have a sticky coconut rice, a pineapple roll or guava pudding. I believe between the six of us, we, we had all three of them, yeah. um, all really good. But the best part of this restaurant was the dining experience. Mm -hmm. So you're seated, there was a group of 12. So as a party of six, we were half the table. Our chef, Aliyah, was a lot of fun. We played like a lot of games with her. She was like, you know, at one point she said, ask the chef anything. We were just like asking her a bunch of questions. Um, we had a really fun group and then 
I unfortunately learned that my brother, Justin, <laughs> got all of the athletic skills, a.k.a. catching chicken. <laughs> it, it didn't take you this long to figure that out. You knew this, in fairness. I mean, I very much knew this, but I was 0 for 6 <laughs> catching chicken, and Justin was 5 for 6. He did really well. But this was probably one of my favorite meals of the whole trip just because we had such a blast. If you are liking this video so far, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. It'll really, really help us out. And before we move on, I also did want to mention that I am a travel agent that specializes in Sandals vacations. So if you are interested in planning a trip to Sandals Grenada or any of the other Sandals properties, please feel free to reach out to me. It is completely free to work with a travel agent. And my email is in the video description listed below. But back to the food. Restaurant number four, Le Jardinier. In case you can't tell, that is the French restaurant. It is open for breakfast and for dinner. Reservations are not required, but this is the one restaurant on property with the resort evening dress code. Meaning for gentlemen, you need to be in pants. You can't wear shorts. Um, so wear jeans, wear khakis or dress pants. They also need to wear closed toed shoes. So bring a pair of dress shoes or boat shoes, something along those lines, and their shirt needs to have a collar. So wear a polo or a button down, something along those lines to this restaurant for dinner, of course, not for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So for breakfast, this is the only breakfast option that is um, a typical sit down a la carte menu. Ordering things like eggs benedict, uh, pancakes. They also have a traditional Grenadian meal there, um, which is fish based, mm -hmm. was very popular to try out as well if you're interested in that. But this was a, a really solid meal, no complaints. Yeah. For dinner, I had the French onion soup and then I tried their signature dish, which is a cordon bleu which was really tasty. I know you had beef tenderloin and really liked it. My dad had duck. My mom had bouillabaisse. Mm -hmm. Really excellent. But this restaurant stood out to us for the dessert. The desserts were really good here. Um, creme brulee and then the molten chocolate lava cake. I would go back to that restaurant just for the desserts. Next on the list, you have Neptune's. And this is a restaurant that if you've been to other sandals, you might be familiar with it. It uh, is right on the water with great views of mm -hmm. the Pink Gin Beach really in Grenada. And this is open for lunch and dinner. Reservations are not required and it is resort casual attire. So for lunch, you can get things such as a fish sandwich, a Caesar salad, a burger. And for dinner, it is a more, more refined, Cuisine for dinner. Mediterranean, Mediterranean. For sure, yes. We actually did not get a chance to eat dinner there, but we did have lunch there several times. It was probably one of my favorite lunch spots mm -hmm. just because the view was so beautiful. Next up, we have Spices. This is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Reservations <laughs> are not required, and it is resort casual attire. We ate here a lot. We did eat here a lot, yes. For breakfast, it is typical breakfast buffet. It is the exact same buffet over at Cucina Romana. Mm -hmm. So exact same thing. The only difference was this one did not have the fresh orange juice machine. Mm -hmm. That was the only difference. It is also a lunch buffet mm -hmm. and every day they have a different type of cuisine. So one day was Mexican food, one day was Caribbean food, one day was Italian. Mm -hmm. So they rotate and have a different cuisine every day. You can check the Sandals mobile app and they will say, what the day is, which is really helpful before you head over there. And for dinner, it is an a la carte Caribbean menu. We unfortunately didn't have a chance to eat dinner here, so we can't speak to it, but breakfast and lunch were always good quality food. And it was a, because it's a buffet, it's easy to get in there, have a yeah. quick lunch and get back to your day. Right below spices, you have soy, which is the sushi restaurant mm -hmm. at Sandals Grenada. It is open for dinner only. It is resort casual attire and reservations are not required. Since this is a sushi restaurant, it is very self-explanatory. You could sit at the sushi bar. You could also sit at a table. They have some other accompaniments for sushi. So your miso soup, uh, spring rolls, things like that. And then you had a really good cocktail here. Yeah, I had their signature cocktail, which was the exact same signature cocktail as the sushi restaurant in Curacao that I had. It's also the same signature cocktail at Kimono's. One, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it has sake in it, it has some like tropical juices. It's really delicious. But what I also really love about soy is that 
their sushi orders come in um, four pieces. So you can order a lot of rolls without you know, getting full. You get to try more because there's only four bites per order. But um, here, the crispy rice with tuna, which is technically an appetizer, was one of my favorite things that I had, definitely worth getting. And if you watched some of our sandals videos before, you know Andy's not a big fan of sushi, but a great thing of coming to a place like Sandals is that you can go to as many restaurants as you want. So what I like to do sometimes is go to the sushi place, have a roll or two as an appetizer, and then we go to another restaurant for our full meal or vice versa, mm -hmm. going having dinner and then coming here for a roll or two after. So if you like sushi and somebody in your party doesn't, still make sure to go and check it out because it is really good. And that's actually what we did for our next restaurant on the list, which is the Tipsy Turtle Pub. Jenna and the family had sushi for dinner. I had a burger at the Tipsy Turtle English style <laughs> pub yeah. later on that night um, for like, I guess my main dinner. Like I said, Tipsy Turtle is the next restaurant. It is um, the English style pub. Reservations are not required. Resort casual attire. And this restaurant is open for dinner and late night. Um, so if you are a night owl and want to be out having a drink with your friends or family till one or two in the morning, uh, Tipsy mm -hmm. Turtle is the spot for that. The food here was delicious. We had wings there as well one night, and the burger was like easily the best burger I've ever had at the Sandals. It was a really good burger. And also like my dad had uh, bangers and mash. They had yeah. fish and chips there. They also had like a brownie sundae. And that full menu was also the late night menu. Right. Open until 2 a.m. And I really enjoyed that because at past Sandals, the British pub had a different and much smaller menu for right. the late night hours between 10 and 2. So it was really nice to be able to get like, if you want a full meal at midnight, you had a nice option. Up next, we have Dino's Pizzeria. This is open for lunch and early dinner. I believe it's open 11 to 6. It is resort casual and reservations are not required. It's basically just a walk up pizza window mm -hmm. kind of thing. It is right by the South Seas pool, just steps from like the swim up bar area. So this was a, just a great place to go. It only has pizza. It has about 10 different kinds that you can order. And then they also had a warming mm -hmm. thing that had popcorn, chicken patties and beef, beef patties. patties that you could just go up and grab, um, which was very convenient. Yeah, but the piece is decent here. It's a great thing to, if you're hanging out at the main pool at the South Seas, go up, get a pizza, eat it on your chair. Can't go wrong. And last but not least, we have Cafe de Paris. This is your quick uh, coffee shop. So you mm -hmm. could get your hot and your iced beverages in here. They also have a gelato section and they have um, the highlight of which is probably the, the crepes. So I know you got a chance to have some of the crepes there. Yeah. Um, they have another case with some ready to uh, ready made pastries. Mm -hmm. So it is your French Parisian style cafe. So we went there at least two to three times a day. Yeah. Like we got many coffees there. We would often go there for like a late night dessert or something. It's really great. And it's right in the center of the resort. And Cafe de Paris is resort casual attire. Reservations are not required and it's open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Now, besides the 10 main restaurants at the resort, there are a couple of additional things worth mentioning. The first of which is Doggy's Hot Dog Stand. This isn't open every day. When we were there, it was open Sunday, Wednesday, and Saturday from about 11 to two, and they just served hot dogs. They actually had super fancy hot dogs, mm -hmm. like a BLT dog and one with like chili and cheese and stuff like that, but you also could get just plain or plain with ketchup, whatever you want. But that was another nice addition to the food offerings. You also have room service available at the resort. This is specifically for club level and butler level. For club level, you could order room service from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And for butler service, it is 24 seven room service. You can also do a private candlelight dinner at the resort. And we actually did that on the beach one night. It is $199 for the couple and you get to each select your own four course meal. And in selecting your four courses, you actually had a ton of options. There was anywhere from like five to 10 
things that you could select for each course. And the food was actually really, really wonderful. Yeah. We will have a whole separate video about our experience with the private candlelight dinner coming up. So make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss that video. And for being an all-inclusive resort, Sandals Grenada has six bars. There are specifically six of them peppered all around the resort, so you don't have to go far to get a drink while you're on vacation. Now, as we mentioned earlier in the video, we did want to discuss about one negative thing that we experienced at this resort, and that was tied to the dining reservations that were required for butches and for kimonos. This is our fourth sandals that we have been to, and this was the first time that we felt that it was difficult to get dining reservations. We've never had a problem before, and that's, of course, making our reservations within the first day that we are on property, because you can't make reservations until you arrive. So we always make sure to do that as one of the first things when we arrive is just make reservations for our stay. So we were able to get what we wanted. It, it took a little while to, to get it, but we found this was the first time that we felt like staying luxury level, which is the bottom tier rooms. We really felt like we were at a disadvantage at this resort when it came to dining. Mm -hmm. When you have a butler, you are able to get what you want and you're able to have a lot more flexibility of Oh, can you change this time? Can you do this? We, we felt we always had to take the first, like we were always the first seating at rest at the restaurant. Yeah. And then we kind of felt a little rushed. We ended up the times that we got weren't ideal for what we wanted, or, you know, we were trying to make it so we could stay in the pool and be in the pool for sunset and then go get ready and have dinner. We never really got to do that on the nights we had reservations. It was you had to get out of the pool at three, four o'clock to go get ready to be that first seating for six. So it just, it wasn't ideal. It was the first time we struggled. And when we went to the dining desk, which is what you have to do when you have luxury level, you can't call or anything. You have to go to the dining desk during certain hours to make reservations. I actually went to the desk during the trip and asked if I could adjust a reservation since something came up. They very frankly said no, everything was full. And so I kindly asked, is there a wait list that I could add my name to? And they said, the wait list is already very long. And they just said, just keep it. You're not gonna get there. Basically there's no shot that we would be able to move it. It was just a little frustrating knowing that people who have a butler can very easily move things around. They have no problem. And then there's all these people stuck on wait lists. So, I mean, I've heard stories of people who go and they just say, sorry, nothing's available for the week. And it's like, you have to really push and be like, I paid for this. It says you have to make reservations. I'm here making one, so give me a spot. Yeah, so so that's kind of the general takeaway, right? Is that your uh, Sandals is positioned, has positioned themselves as a luxury all-included vacation. So when their marketing and the website say 10 restaurants included, there's no fine print that goes along with that that says, oh, well, only pending this, this, and this, right? Like we get that there are reservations, but if you're marketing it so forwardly as saying, you have all of these available to you, then it's kind of implied that when you're there on vacation, you get to eat there if you would like to eat there. Right, and I don't think it's as big of an issue if you are staying seven night, like if you're staying a week, most likely if you're luxury level, you're gonna be getting your reservations, your the last two nights of your trip because it's so far out. But we had some people who were only staying four nights and we wanted to try these places with them. And we really had to push a little bit to say, well, they're leaving. They right. need to eat here before they leave. Like help make that happen. You shouldn't need to pay the premium for a butler in order to get reservations that are included in the cost of your rate right. for sandals. And to put this in perspective, we have not had this issue at other sandals resorts and we do know this resort was pretty sold out. Yep. If when we looked, I looked two days before we flew out to see what was available. There wasn't one room available for a full week. It was like, you would have to do two nights here and two nights. So, so we were, it was a pretty full resort. Yeah. So it could just be, you know, it was really full and just a lot of people made more than one butches and more than one kimonos reservation. Um, so just wanted to give you a heads up for that and, and really stress the importance of when you arrive on site, 
make your dining reservations. Do not wait because that could be the difference of getting what you want. Yeah, and this is just us being honest about our experience. Yep. Overall, our experience at Sandals Grenada was great. Yep. So, um, but just, again, want to be transparent about this little nuanced aspect of the dining. That is everything you need to know about dining at Sandals Grenada. Great quality food there pretty solid sandals all around. So if you have any questions, definitely let us know in the comments. And again, if you are looking to go on your sandals vacation, hit up uh, Jenna for your no obligation quote. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media at A Couple Travelers. And until next time, keep traveling.